Now this is a video on uh, long run average costs and how they are derived. Uh, we've been uh, covering this uh, in the last two weeks. We've been talking about the uh, cost curves and and how the optimal uh, point of uh, production is or profit maximizing point of production is determined. And oftentimes we talk about the, the uh, long run cost curves, especially the average cost curve and I, as I mentioned earlier in the seminars, the uh, in the long run everything is variable, so all costs are variable. Long run fixed costs are there is no fixed cost basically. But then question is why the uh, average cost in the long run is U shaped, but is is more extended or stretched out compared to the short run ones. So let's derive this uh, uh, average cost for the long run. Uh, and then we can make other comments where necessary. Um, let's recall that the uh, short run costs are again U-shaped but are narrower. Why the U-shaped? First of all, as we start uh, as we start with a small amount of outputs, I say this this is actually not all. This is zero for some reason. This became letter O here. It's zero. So as we increase production. Our average costs decline because our fixed cost is now being uh, spread over many units. So uh, at, the, at the early stage, they are, you know, at, at, with, with small output, they, they are they are still quite high. So there's uh, room for spreading them over many units if we can expand further. So we increase the scale, yeah. And then as we do this, the cost average cost now declines. So the fixed cost, which we usually pay, regardless of producing or not, such as insurance payments for the buildings, uh, warehouse maintenance, and the uh, anything that's not related to the, that doesn't vary with the uh, output is basically a fixed cost for a firm, telephone bills, anything. These, these are period costs, they aren't related to output. So they usually need to be uh, uh, spread over units, of, units produced. And that way we then uh, uh, calculate total costs, which is then can be divided by the quantity produced that gives us the average cost. So in the short run, however, the average costs quickly start increasing uh, for many other reasons. But then let's assume that that's the case here that the as the, we increase the production, our costs start declining. But at some point, they start increasing, and this is the because of the uh, decreasing, uh, decreasing or diminishing returns to additional inputs. So as we increase. Uh, Production obviously to increase more uh, to expand the production we employ more in the short run more variable costs because say factory for example in the short run is not easy to build you know you, you need to build a, you can build a factory in about a year probably if it's a large scale company but some costs are fixed some uh, some factors of input are fixed so as a result we can only ma increase our variable inputs such as employing more labor but as we employ more labor the costs eventually increase related to the what they add to to production they don't really produce as much but then costs increase so per unit costs start increasing again although fixed costs are definitely declining decreasing as we increase the output but the variable costs start increasing and remember average cost is the sum of uh, variable costs so average total cost basically is the sum of uh, variable costs and then the fixed costs so the variable part starts increasing from this point onwards as a result we the, our average cost starts increasing and we usually think that or expect that that the firms try to operate at this point the minimum cost point but then because costs are increasing and there is demand for a product and then we want to expand the uh, expand the uh, the production or scale of our operations, then we need to definitely increase that fixed part of the uh, the the factor. That's let's say it's a factory. So in this example, let's assume that the, the fixed part of our uh, inputs, so variable parts, uh, variable inputs are labor and many other things. But then let's assume that factory is the fixed part in the short run. So in the short run, short run, it could be anything between a month to, uh, to a year, depending on the size of the business. For example, Airbus. A company that produces Boeing that produces all these airplanes and airlines for them in the short run could be a five year well it could be shorter but then usually developing a product and just making the product available takes some time for them so to increase their capacity in the long run they need another five year probably to build 
the factory and things like that. For oil companies, for example, it's, it takes some time. But for small firms, short run is a very short run. It could be six months. Um, so their costs quickly uh, start increasing as they increase the variable, co- variable inputs, but then they, f- they have a fixed factor of inter- uh, input that's usually a factory or machinery, say. So let's assume for the sake of simplicity, our fixed uh, factor of input or factor input here, the production factor input is factory, all the machineries, the capital in other words. So that makes the short run cost increase. And well, that doesn't let us reduce the short run costs further down because we cannot really now expand beyond producing more than, let's say, 100 units because of that factory uh, constraint. Now, the now next thing is, why don't we build the next uh, next factory? So with the next factory, we, th- we can now increase the uh, capacity or scale, which then allows us to reduce the costs further. So from that point onwards, again, we can see that there is a decline, further decline in the costs. And however, again, this is in the short run. With two factories, we can't really increase furthermore, I mean, anymore. Again, in the short run, there's diminishing returns to inputs will kick in. That causes our short run costs with two factories uh, increase again. So, oh, okay, close it. There was an uh, error in my computer, so hopefully you didn't see that. <laughs> if you have shown, if, if you saw that, then um, just ignore it. All right. So with two factories, short run costs start increasing again. But then, if we want to expand further, we need to vary our fixed factor of input. So again, we'll increase the uh, uh, increase our factory portfolio into three. That allows us to minimize our short run costs again to an extent. But then again, we may face it further. So it goes on. But then eventually our costs start increasing again. As you can see, the short run costs on their own now, not necessarily, I mean, they decline, but at at its scale of operation, they start increasing again. That's again because of uh, uh, diminishing returns or these economies, I should say. Now, uh, two things here. First of all, up to this point, for example, up to a certain point of expansion, we were enjoying economies of scale. So as we increase the scale, as we produce more, we were reducing the, we were reduce, we, we, we were able to reduce our total costs, average costs per unit. But then beyond certain point, it is not possible because then we have these economies of scale because of all these operational complications and all these sorts of management related issues and not being able to efficiently produce. Now, that this basically these three or four, five curves describe the long run cost in the end. So if we, if you were to uh, connect the the um, the bottom of these curves with just a straight uh, or, or one curve, say say this for example, this, this if we assume this is one curve, long run average curve, then this makes up the gives us the the, the long run average curve. In other words, if, if we connect the bottom parts, the the the, the parts where we, we can operate uh, uh, with a uh, with certain amount of uh, scale and efficiency gains, for example, you know, from this point to this point, we are gaining some sort of efficiency. In other words, we, we are taking advantage of the economies of scale. We are being more efficient as we produce more at low cost. And from this part of this curve, to this part we're doing that and then we start as a new factory that allows us to reduce further down so each time we have a new cost curve short run curve it allows us to reduce the curve in the short run i mean the cost in the short run but as we increase fat, uh, increase the factories our company is becoming large and large companies well operations become more complicated and there's a lot of, it involves a lot of management layer layers and 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 then delegations and things like this this leads to these economies of scale so so up to here we had this uh, these economy economies of scale so as we uh, our operations increasing operations allowed us to increase the in, uh, use the or take advantage of the economy of scale but then from this point onwards for example we started seeing this these economies of scale kicking in that's being larger is not anymore a good thing for this company now because now increasing more basically the scale of output is just causing further complications and more costs to the adding more costs so uh, the best would be to stop at some point where it did be just before the these economies of scale kicks in so the, the the minimum efficient scale or the minimum cost scale would be somewhere here right in the middle part here yeah so if this is basically also a case of 
uh, or a, 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 this curve basically reflects two things. Up to the minimum point is uh, we enjoying economies of scale. In other words, economies of scale means saving by increasing the scale. Then comes the constant uh, scale uh, or the no, no, uh, no, no reward for expanding. But this one is, doesn't have a, a flat line here at the bottom, so it just starts increasing. So we don't have that constant part. Instead, we have these economies of scale, which means we started actually losing money as we increase the scale. So at some point we should stop and that will be the middle point. And this is a long run average curve and how it's des uh, uh, derived. So the aim was to derive the long run average curve, but I ended up explaining to you what the economies of scale and these economies of scale is. Now from practice, if, if you are thinking about how this applies to the, to the real world, now think of large firms. Every now and then you will hear on the news that or read on the news that the big companies are laying off people or cutting down uh, operations. This is because they think they think that they are running on uh, operating on this economy scale part of the short, uh, long run cost. So if they are uh, producing every year, let's say thousand units of something, and they think that they could actually reduce the costs by uh, slimming down or cutting down the, the output they do it by the, the usual way is to reduce the variable inputs or even the fixed inputs as well, if necessary, selling the factories and divesting the sum of the operations because this is just causing them extra uh, or creating extra costs to them and then the company being inefficient. So large banks do this usually every now and then financial uh, financial companies uh, lay off a lot of people and sell their buildings and then lease out because there's, that doesn't permit, I mean, that they, they are on somewhere in this part. So. If, it's every manager's desire or wish to be right somewhere in the middle, in the long run. Um, other things, well, just keep an eye on the newspaper, uh, news, news, news feeds usually on the Google or something like this. Uh, you will see that every now and then a, a lot of companies, a lot of the companies in the West usually doing this, laying off because they are and they end up being here somewhere here. But we would like to be somewhere, somewhere close to the middle. All right, so hopefully this uh, video helped you to understand what economies of scale and these economies of scale is and how the long run average cost curve is derived. Lucy, this is this is quite a stretched out U curve in the bottom of the U curve basically. It's basically made up of many short run curves, cost curves, and I hope you understood how this was the case, yeah? Okay, it's not usually straight line like this. It's not a nice smooth curve as you can see. Just We just touched the bottom of each, each of these. Well, not bottom, but the parts where they are close to bottom of the short run curves. Okay, see you in the next video.